Okay, this is lecture six of my uh, course in Venn diagrams, propositional logic, and predicate logic. Um, okay, so last uh, the last lecture I was talking about, I talked about what P or Q means and what P and Q mean. And I explained, I explained the rule for P or Q. And by the rule, whenever I do the rule, I box it in. And this is a V, should be a V. And I did this. And this means that this is the rule. It's basically a, a abbreviated uh, truth table, but basically tells you that the only time P or Q is false, the false goes under the V or the vel, and that rep represents the, the truth of this whole statement is going to be under the, this operator or connective. The only time this statement here is false is when P is false and Q is false. And that accords with basically our you know, our, our, our view of or in English, at least one of the views. If I say it's either a cat or a dog, that means if it's not a cat and it's not a dog, then my statement was false. So the or, it's, pick, it's capturing that idea. Um, that's what this captures. When I say A or B, the only time A or B is false is when A is false and, and B is false. A or B. If one of them is true, then, you know, if I say it's a cat or a dog and it is a, it is a dog, well, then my statement was true. And if it's a cat, it's true. Uh, the only time it's false is if neither one is true. So that's what, that's what that captures. The and captures the idea that this statement is true only when both are true. Okay. That's conjunction and disjunction. Um, and then I showed you the Venn diagram for each of these. If you want a diagram, P and Q, you do P. It's only true here when you're inside P and inside Q, so it's false here when you darken a section, when I put a dark circle in a section, I, I, I call that dark in a section. The only time P and Q is true, and when a section is not darkened, that means the statement, this is P and Q. So P and Q is true when P is true and Q is true. And it's false when P is true and Q is false, and so on for the other sections. P or Q, I talked about this in the last lecture, so I'm not going to go over it again. Um, P or Q, if it, the diagram for P or Q is here. The only time P or Q is false is when P is false and Q is false, when you're outside the P circle and outside the, the Q circle at the same time. Okay, now... So I'm going to erase this. I'm going to talk about the arrow, which is uh, called material implication. So, and I'll show you how to diagram that one. So P arrow Q is called material implication. Now, material implication, I O N. Here, let me tell you what the rule is first, and then I'll explain it. So I'll put rule, and I'll do this, T, F, F. What this means is that P arrow Q, and you pronounce it if P then Q. If P then Q is false only when, that's what, when I do the rule, it's always going to be it's false only when a certain things are true, only when P is true and Q is false. P is called the antecedent, and T because it comes before the arrow, antecedent, antecedent, and Q is the consequent. That's just the name of these 
you know, whatever comes before the arrow is called the antecedent, and whatever comes after the arrow is called the consequent of the statement. Okay, so that's the rule for P arrow Q. Let me give you an, uh, kind of, <clears throat> this is not exactly what we mean in English, um, and it might sound strange to uh, in certain cases, but let me give you the basic idea behind it. Let's say if I say, uh, <clears throat> if, if today is Monday, then we will go swimming. If today is Monday, so MP will stand for today is Monday, <clears throat> and we will go swimming. I'll just abbreviate it as swimming. If today is Monday, then we will go swimming. Now, let me go through the pot. The, I'll do the truth table. Um, we have T, T, F, F, T, F, T, F. Okay, it's always the same. And then I'll put P arrow Q. Okay, now there's four lines. So let's just go through the four lines. Line one. If today is Monday and we do go swimming, right? I said if today is Monday, then we will go swimming. Line one today is Monday and we do go swimming. Well, that's true, right? I said, that's what I said. If, if today is Monday, we will go swimming. Line one says today is Monday and we went swimming. So that statement is true. P arrow Q is true for line one. Now look at line two. Line two says that if that today is Monday and we didn't go swimming, well, then my statement was false because I said, if today is Monday, we will go swimming, and today is Monday, and we didn't go swimming, so my statement is false. That's what this captures. Basically, P arrow Q is false only for line two. It's only false for line two, when P is true and Q is false, when the antecedent is true and the consequent is false. For the other ones, it's true. Now, that might be kind of strange. Let's say today is Monday is false. So let's say today is Tuesday and we go swimming on Tuesday. Well, I didn't say anything about Tuesday. I just said if today is Monday, we'll go swimming. So since I didn't say anything about Tuesday, I mean, def I, didn't, I definitely didn't lie because I didn't say anything about Tuesday. So I'm kind of assuming that, you know, if, you, if you're not lying, you're telling the truth. So my statement will, can be considered true. And again, let's say today is Tuesday, and we don't go swimming. Well, I didn't lie. I, I didn't say anything about Tuesday. I said if today is Monday, we'll go swimming. So for lines three and four, the statement is considered to be true. The only time if P then Q is considered false is when this is true and that's false. For example, okay, and you can do it. Uh, any example will uh, work. You could think of hundreds of exa examples. I could say, for example, if you give me $10, I will give you a sandwich. You give me $10 and I don't give you a sandwich. Then I was lying, right? <laughs> My statement was false, right? So you could come up with hundreds and just you could come up with hundreds of those type of statements. If it's a cat, then it's an animal. Well, that's, uh, that's always going to be in it. Let's say if, well, forget, let's say if it's a cat, well, so let's do this one. If it's a cat, then it's uh, in the closet. Okay, so the, the, we I, I say, yeah, if it's a cat, then it will be in the closet. It's a cat, but it's not in the closet. My statement was false. I was lying. So that's, that's and I, let me show you the, here's how the Venn diagram for P or Q. So draw the two circles, P, arrow, Q, if P, then Q, it's only false when P is true, when we're inside the P circle, and we're outside Q, so it's only false here. So that's the Venn diagram for P arrow Q. Okay, now, now I want, that's enough for right now. I'll, we're, I'll, I'll come back to truth tables and stuff later, but now I want to actually, you know, show you how to diagram an argument in propositional logic, because 
ultimately that's what does us uh, that's what i'm trying to show in this course how venn diagrams can be used to diagram argument arguments in propositional logic so so far i've just been concerned with explaining how propositional log logic works i mean the letters and the logical connectives and so on but now i want to actually show an argument so let's take an argument for example like p arrow q p q okay if p then q p q if it's a cat then it's an animal it's a cat therefore it's an animal if today is monday then we will go to the beach today is monday we will go to the beach if you give me ten dollars i'll give you a sandwich you give me ten dollars i'll give you a sandwich this form of argument is a valid or i have to explain what valid means but anytime you have this form of an argument it's always a valid argument it's good logic it doesn't matter what you replace what how you translate p and q for example i could say if it's a cat then it's a scientist. Now that's crazy, but we don't really care. We're not talking about, we don't care if it's crazy or not. Oh, a valid argument. Here, let me tell you what a valid argument is. In a valid argument, if, if the premises are true, the conclusion has to be true. Or another way to put it is, assuming the premises to be true, the conclusion is true. In a valid argument, what, what you have is that the conclusion follows logically from the premises. That's what a valid argument is. Now, take this argument here. If it's a cat, then it's a scientist. Okay, we don't care whether it's true or false. That happens to be false. But let's just pretend that it's true. Let's just see what follows from these two statements. We'll see what logically follows from these two statements being true. Whether they are true or not doesn't matter. We just assume they're true. If P then Q is, assume it's true and we assume P is true, well, what logically has to be the case? It has to be the case that Q is true. If it's a cat, then it's a scientist. It's, that's not true, but if it were true, if, it, if it's a cat, then it's a scientist. Pretend it's true. It's a cat. Pretend it's true. If this is true and that's true, this has to be true. You cannot even imagine this not being true. If you are thinking that this is true and you are thinking that this is true, you have to be thinking that this is true. This is a valid argument. Now, let me show you how, uh, and I'll develop this more in the next le lecture, but let me just show you how to, you could, the, I'll do the Venn diagrams. And I may not be able to finish it in, within the next two minutes, but let me just do what I can do and I'll come back in the next lecture. <clears throat> Here's how you diagram this argument. What you do is you diagram the two premises and do not diagram the, the conclusion. What you do is you di we're going to diagram the premises and then we're just, and we're going to have a picture once we diagram the premises and then we look, we just stand back and look at the diagram and we ask ourselves, is, do we know that Q is true by looking at the picture? Okay. That means, do we know that we have to be in the Q circle? That means, is this circle, is this section here, one of these sections is going to be white. If P and Q, we know how to do that. We darken, that's, I went over that last time. I just, a minute ago. That's how you diagram, if darken everything inside the P circle, outside the Q circle. The only time, if P and Q is false, is here, so it's true, true, true. So that's how we diagram if P and Q. Now we're going to diagram P. Well, we're going to, to diagram P. P is true when P is true. It's false when P is false. That's how we, so we're going to darken this section and this section. Okay, that's, well, now we're finished. We've diagrammed the premise. We've diagrammed the second premise. Now, do we know that Q is true? Are we in the, does, does, uh, is the only section we can be in, uh, in the Q circle? Is this, do we have to be in, in the Q circle? Yeah, right there. There's only one section that we can be in, and that's right there, and that is in the Q circle. We know from looking at this picture, this picture here tells us that Q is true, because look at Q is true. That's a valid argument. I'll, I'll continue this next lecture, and I'll go in more, more slowly. I just want to get that out. So that's the first thing that we've diagrammed so far, first Venn diagram.